Uh, well, tis your host as always. Moi, the mad reviewer. Oh. Bunnies! They're back. I swear to you, I'm getting terrified of white bunnies in this setting. What the- Oh my god, Subaru's death has to be one of the most brutalist loops I've seen him in this so far. This week he lost his eye, then he got basically mauled to death, practically. He got the crap beat out of him by Roswell, by Roswell, I'm gonna make it to Roswell in this video, cause screw that man. <laughs> screw Roswell to the highest degree for this. Oh my god. And, and Amelia can apparently can go full Yandere Satala, Satala mode. Which, that in itself is kind of terrifying, but okay. I didn't know Amelia could go completely insane like that. And that was a manipulation as well. And the Beatrix death. Oh. Oh. Oh, this episode. If it didn't hit you in the gut a few times, there's a few times where it's got the bit, the knee-jerk shock value. There, there's a lot in this week's episode too compact. Now, this is my, usually, my recordings, I give my, I already dissected it, but I usually like one watch. I can occasionally get the gist of it. Now, ReZero is a show meant to be watched once or twice, but most of the time I tend to analyze things and pay very fine to attention. When I saw the White Raps at the end of the episode, I was flipped. They ate, last time they ate Subaru from the inside out. Like, you know, they went in his mouth and his body and ate it from the inside out. No, this week, this week, he's got the eye patch messed up, the old Big Boss style. Well, slumbles his way to a yandere Amelia, gets a lap pedal and dies. And then you see an out shot. And his body's been mangled and mauled. He's got holes here. Part of his arms are, you know, I mean, the rabbits have basically mauled this guy to almost nothing. How he made it past all those rabbits to Amelia, I would like to know because there were a ton of them. Without getting eaten like last time or losing an arm. So now Subaru's going to restart a loop. And thankfully, he can probably avoid Beatrix's death, which is good, but now here's what he's walking into, but there's one thing I want you to know. Subaru's unhinged. He is... I don't know... I, I, I got to... Uh, I heard a term, somebody used its term, definition, uh, uh, an analogy to tell whether you're crazy or you're insane. I'm almost certain Subaru's borderline insane. Let me explain here. Crazy is, there's two cars going 80 miles an hour. You're on top of this one car, so you jump to the other car. Crazy is meaning to do it, you're going to do something in the spur of the moment that does not make sense. Insane is, you, I get a cardboard box. I get a box, a, a, a can of mail out. Put mail all over the cardboard box. Pick the cardboard the box up and put it in uh, on my shelf. Because by picking the cardboard box, I'm knowingly picking up the cardboard box, knowing there's mail inside it, and putting it right there. I'd almost classify Subaru in it insane right now. I don't even know if he's still sane. And whether he can come back from the level of productivity that he is at is ridiculous. He's... He talks very... particular to this episode. Almost similar to how Roswell talks, his dialogue. His, Roswell, his, parallel, his dialogue parallels Roswell's, to a degree. How Roswell doesn't exactly... Roswell basically, at the very end of the after the rabbits of death, the, the, the horrifying bunnies start mauling him. He goes, yeah, I'll see you next time, Subaru. I know if you're returned by death. I'm like you. I can't go back. He's returned by death. You'll see another version of me. Which is terrifying. That's absolutely terrifying. I swear, if I see another white rabbit next episode and Subaru gets mauled to death by a white rabbit. Because I swear. And Amelia went completely insane. Okay, let's tackle this. Roswell's betrayal was quite... It was foreshadowed. It was foreshadowed the hell out of it when the Satala thing came, which was episode 9, I believe, when she first came. You see Roswell holding a book and he's going, I will be willing to walk into hell with you, Subaru, if that's the road you take. It's something along the lines of those dialogues, if I recall right. So we knew he carried a book. And that's its importance. Now, what the book does, we aren't exactly particularly sure, but we know it is not a replica gospel or one of the Gospels. It is a official Gospel, from what we understand. He, Rothwell states himself. What the book does, we don't know. It's not the same as Beatrice's book. It's not the same as Juices. It could be as it was Juices. And I like Subaru even states to, uh, I think, Beatrice at one time. It was Beatrice and Rothwell. Rothwell, he says, you're not just going to look at the future on this book. That's what those books do. You can, you're not going to find the future. And he takes Be Beatrice's book, and her book's empty. Kind of like Juices was. 
No, seriously. Juice's book in season one was pretty much empty. Unless it's cryptic so that only they can see it. I don't remember there being writing in the book of gospel, but anyway. And Juice's book. And, uh, Beatrice's book is interesting as well because it's empty. Beatrix. Beatrix I'd almost consider mentally broken at this point. This is a woman who probably isolated herself in a room for 400 years. Let me get into that. 400 years she's isolated herself in a book room because her mother, which would be Echidana for some reason, said, Hey, I want you to watch this room, please. Peace. I'm going to go die and like try to reincarnate myself through, make, create immortality through some visible means and failed, ironically. This week was so messed up. Like, there's so many things, and why I say between tricks is because human isolation, I've said this in many, many episodes, human isolation does very bad things to the brain. It's one of the reasons why solitary confinement and just being locked in a room by yourself can really mess up the human psyche. Like, really bad. Humans by our very nature are social creatures. Me, just thinking to interact interacting with you, knows I'm interacting with something. You stick a person in an isolated room like a library with almost nothing, that's almost completely torture. And 400 years of that. Of course, I'm not going to go into the rant about writers have no scale and sense of scale, but still. And I like how Super approaches her, knowing he needs to say something, but he doesn't specifically say what Roswell told him to say. Don't you notice that too? Roswell gave him a hint like an episode ago, I believe. Two episodes, one episode ago. It's like, just say this to Beatrix and she'll, she'll do what you say. Didn't do it. That's on Subaru's head there. The Elsa? What the hell is Elsa? The immortal? Seriously, like I said, I have I, I kind of dropped rereading R4 just to watch the anime. But I can't remember. Elsa looked freaking immortal. I, I didn't know shadow magic could actually be used on the offense like that. For, because for, for everything we've seen with shadow magic, this is interesting because I mentioned this. Subaru has a massive affinity for shadow magic. And spirits. Julia states in the bit in the first season he has an affinity for spirits. This and he had stated he has an affinity for black magic. Who's a spirit and who uses black magic? And who can he make a contract with? Yeah, I'm just painting the obvious. It's on the nose, broadcast as dead as lies, like Beatrix. He's probably gonna make a contract with Beatrix again. But this is one thing that makes sense, doesn't make sense. This is the second time Beatrix has killed Subaru. No, I'm not, I'm dead serious. If you really think about it, she opened a portal and threw him out in season one when he killed Amelia and she goes, I just don't want to see you die again. So she throws him out and Puck kills him. So she inadvertently was the cause of his death by Puck. Of course, Puck gave him a massive wake up call that he needed that episode too, but that also helped too. This episode, she, she does the exact same trick she did. She teleports him away. Because she doesn't want him dying in front of her again. Does she retain some knowledge of that one particular loop where he jumped off the cliff in front of her? I mean, I just want to know that. I just want to know that specific part. Because we do know packs are etched on the soul. They're etched in the soul. So that's actually interesting. She pulled the same trick she pulled in Thing and causes death there. Except you teleported him to the worst bus possible right to a crazy Amelia. Thank you, Beatrix. Oh, God. When I saw Amelia talking, I'm like, oh, oh, God. Oh, God, Sato is here. Sato is here. And then I'm like, wait, wait, that's Amelia. Amelia's broke. Yeah, so she, caught, she basically had a psychotic breakdown. Now, Roswell. Let's get to Roswell, because I'm going to close up this one. I don't want to make it too long, because this week... This week's episode was fairly self-explanatory. All it was was a massive exposition dump, which we are fully aware of, and basically giving you massive neon foreshadowing of what is to come. Um, Roswell, I want to kill the man. You stab Rem to kill Garfield. Okay, Garfield, I've made it clear I'm not particularly fond of Garfield. I've, got, I've gotten a certain warm again after you kill all civvies, but still I've messed up that one, so I'm still pissed at that, but... That was brutal. You didn't need to kill Ram, go straight through her heart and shoot straight to his part, Roswell, to kill Garfield with threat in the room. And he did that because both their guards were downed. See, this is how it was very clever in a way of how he killed them was um, 
at that moment when uh, Garfield got mad, he got mad directly at Ren. Ren was focusing strictly on Garfield to prevent the conflict. Roswell does a basically flash ship and puts his hand straight through both their chests, killing both of them. Well, basically killing Ren basically like mere seconds later, and Garfield pretty much on death's door, and then he crushes his head. And then he goes to pursue to beat Subaru, which I thought, Subaru's like, are you just going to kill me? He's like, nah, 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 why would I want to kill you? I don't want to kill you. Which is really weird, too. Why wouldn't he kill him? I mean, it's pretty, I think Roswell knows he has returned by death's power somehow, and knows he's in a failed loop. So, one of Subaru's loops. So, this is fairly interesting, if we, if we put it in theory crafting ways. Roswell knows, he knows Subaru can basically loop time loop to a degree um yeah that would make sense why he wouldn't kill him and i love it he's like he, he, super goes it's too early the white rabbits should not be here the rabbit they don't belong here it's too early because super was keeping track of time he's on a deadline he's on a deadline as it was stated many episodes ago how else will appear in like five days so yeah he got there on a deadline Ugh. i'll tell you Oh, yeah, and you find out the kid villager was the, was the one that Elsa's partner is the whole time. I did not think that. I was like, I forgot all about that kid. So, yeah, I did not see that twist coming. That was the curb wall of nowhere, but, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, Roswell, I wanted to kill you. When you killed Ram right in front of him and just did that, and Super just like... And, and it's funny, Roswell points out, he's like, you're not very caring in the fact that I just killed these two people in front of you. you you're not going to say, I'm going to kill never forgive you or whatever you know how supers get really emotional he's like and this that this goes also one thing of how i think supers typically insane and i don't know how he's gonna recover because maybe uh actually donna please give him some therapy give him some one-on-one -on -one time in that tea party room or something or, or because let us his carnal desires what to do i swear but this whole episode he's really unhinged his eyes the, the uh, as i mentioned you look at the eyes when he's talking to Beatrix, he literally goes unhinged. He's like, you think death is funny, you know I mean? He, uh, you talk about me wanting to kill, like it's a casual thing. It, it, he's, it's like he's getting back that fear of death, but you know, he's projecting it on her. Like, why do I want to kill you? Why do you like, I don't want to kill you. You know, it's it's very weird. He really does in the very beginning when he's talking to me, just come across as a madman, like completely insane. And his eyes give it away. They go from big, drink, drink. The, the animators went out of their way to especially look at the eyes. The eyes basically say it more than his dialogue. If you look at the animation eyes, you're going, and the voice actor nails it too. The voice actor does a great job of sounding almost detached. Yes, the voice actor sounds completely detached. Like, very completely detached. And that's what also, with the animation of how they've animated his facial, his facial features and his body language, how he talks and the voice actor is nailing a very unhinged in Subaru. That's actually what terrified Garfield last episode when he says, I'm the only man who can walk through hell. I've seen hell back. Because <laughs> you look at those eyes, you see a madman. And Subaru is at this point pretty much is. I would say, I honestly am wondering how Subaru is going to recover. Honestly. Getting mauled to death by the White Rabbits a second time. And then, except this time they didn't eat you and they, until you're just an empty carcass left. No, you saw Roswell get eaten. That's horrifying enough. Then we see that on screen. Why do we need to see the most of that on screen? And then you managed to hobble your way. I want to know. I just, I, I don't know how he made it to, to the temple again where Amelia is. And why hadn't the rabbit rabbits eaten her yet? I'm fearing those horned bunnies. I really am. I really am. And it's funny, Super, even when he does rock, I'm like, how are we supposed to kill him? And then Super, also like, I'm not going to kill him. I'm gonna, he's like, Russell's kind of like, I'm going out here to get killed and you're going to meet another version of me. Peace. So this one basically shows that Roswell's dirty. He's pretty dirty. A pretty politician until it's very. Oh, well, I wouldn't say politician, but yeah, he does mention how he was Millie's political backer. But yes, now we officially know Subaru's now even on more thinner ice because see, he's got the ticking clock with Elsa at the mansion. He's got the ticking clock with the bunnies. He now knows he kind of can't leave Amelia because Amelia will go completely insane. Because we found that out, he left without telling Amelia. So Amelia's gone completely insane, so that's another thing. Fourth factor is now we have a betrayal of Roswell, and another factor is we have Be now Be knows Beatrix wants to die. Subaru's got five issues on his plate right now. How the hell is he going to fix this in this next loop? I want to know. Well, you can spoil me in the comments, but it's going to be interesting. 
That's five issues you knew you have to do with Subaru. And I swear, if he never gets appointed to me, I, I hope he gets appointed to me this night. Official, official night, because by God, man, you need to be knighted after all the crap you're going through. I've said it before and I've said it a zillion times. Subaru is the only reason she has as much political power as she does. And it's only mainly through all the loops and information he gathers. I also like the fact that Echidana basically implied last episode was, oh yeah, return by death, you know, you know. Oh, wait, I forgot to mention it. Why is Subaru basically unhinged? He now knows he doesn't exactly have to worry about dying anymore. He can die as many times as he wants. Because there's a, he basically has infinite lives. The one thing Return by Death will screw you over by is, as long as Satala maintains the illusion that she loves him, I only hear something, but it doesn't really care about the people that can get caught in the crossfire, like Rem. Like, you can't prevent Rem from ever coming, getting eaten because she's not in the equation of, you know, the Return by Death factor. So yeah, he can use all he wants to gather information, but it's not knowing when, where, where his next checkpoint will be. So worry, Subaru, you need to find that checkpoint. How those checkpoints happen, that'll definitely help you. Well, this week of we this week's episode of ReZero was completely insane. And I hope you uh, liked my small segment on this week. So I'll review you next week's as always. Because ReZero just gets interest to interest. It's one of those shows I would enjoy to talk about. I could actually make an entire stream just dedicated to talking about ReZero. It's also intermittent noted that that this is Studio Y Fox and they actually care about the source material from what I can understand. I mean, they did just food for just for you know. They redid the entire season to add it to add in content that they were, they had to cut basically. So basically, the season, well, that they just did not too long for it, that where every episode was like forty five minutes long, is like the uncut, unfull well, version that they couldn't do with twelve episodes of run. Now well, I hope we get this treatment with this with this material because with Arc Four. Because I want to know something. How far are we animating to? Because Arc Four's big. Arc Four's big. I hope they just animate all of Arc Four, and then they stop somewhere in the beginning of Arc Five, and then we can get Arc Five and Six animated announcements. Because there is Arc Five and Six completed, so there's source material now. When ReZero first aired, we Arc Four had just started, so they stopped there, which I complimented on. By the way, a long time ago, you know that. So now that we know we have Arc Five and Six left there. Are we going to be able to get that announced another season of ReZero for those arcs? Because Subaru's journey gets worse and worse and worse and worse. That's all i got to say. Whew. Well, this is your host as always, a matter of year, signing off. I hope you enjoyed this week's of episode of my thoughts or of this episode of, well, what I think of this week's episode of ReZero. Bunnies. I don't want to see those bunnies next week. Please, please, White Fox, don't bring the bunnies back. They're terrifying. Bunnies are supposed to be like these cute little things that most people love. They're not supposed to be things that eat out some... Do what they did to Super this week. Those as always, signing off. Leave a comment below on what you'd like me to look at next. Or something or other. Till then, see ya.